Hello, hello. If you are a coach, course creator, entrepreneur, service-based entrepreneur, this today is for you. I have a question. Are you in a place right now where you feel like you are running, growing, and scaling a profitable business? Or are you at a place where you kind of feel like you've created a job for yourself and you might be your own worst boss? Like the worst boss you ever had is you because your boss, aka you, has you working like 80 hour work weeks. So if you're just hopping on for the very first time, hello, hello. My name is Jen Casey. I am a business strategy coach and I work with online coaches who want to build, sell, and effectively run high level group coaching programs. So today we are going to chat a little bit all about what is really holding you back right now. Where are the areas that you are currently getting stuck? I know. I know because I've been there. And I talk to hundreds of entrepreneurs, and I would say the large majority of them, especially those who are in the first couple of years of their business, are in this place of trying to find a quote unquote balance between doing the work, showing up, creating revenue, and also learning how to build a team and outsource and scale their offers and attract clients. And there's just so many different things that they could be doing However, most of them who are not profitable at this moment are in that place, going in that circle, that merry-go-round that never ends, because they're not focusing on the things that are actually generating revenue in their business. They are not clear on the things that are going to make them profitable. So kind of talking about this idea of, you know, getting kind of stuck in doing all the things, I think we first need to address some of the biggest beliefs around hard work. How many of you have ever enjoyed identifying as a hard worker? Enjoyed the idea of, you know, that you just could grind it out more than anybody else? Like, I know, I used to wear that shiz like a badge of honor. I had my like superhero cape on and it was like, look at me, look at all the things that I can do. I'm exhausted, but yay, I feel like I'm getting a lot done. And unfortunately, that style thinking paired with the behavior that goes along with it and the beliefs and the identity is the fast track to burnout. Like, ladies, gentlemen, I got some serious gray hairs in the years where I truly believed that to be true. Some early grays. So where does this come from? Well, I think, especially in American culture, the idea of hard work, hustle, grind it out, work in corporate, work in a company for many years, continue to move up the ladder, and like, then you'll be rewarded. Then you will finally be the person who makes the most money and you will have the accolades and la di da di da But unfortunately, that style of thinking and that structure only kind of applies to entrepreneurship like I am team like do the work show up consistently I am NOT a fan of the idea that you've got to do it all yourself because as a business owner you physically cannot think about it this way I see a lot of online entrepreneurs being like no 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 Jen I just have to do everything myself I can't afford to outsource I can't blah 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 and I'm like well hold on hold on you have no overhead almost no overhead in starting an online business if you were starting a physical location business, be it a yoga studio or let's go with a restaurant. That's a perfect example. If you were to open a restaurant tomorrow, what types of in one investments would you have overhead and what types of people would you immediately hire? In no world would you try, or maybe you would try and you would probably hate your life, right? If you try to open a restaurant, be the person who cleans the restaurant, does the dishes, mops the floor, cleans the toilet, preps all the food, uh, cooks all the food, works the cash register, does the financials and all of the P&Ls and everything behind the scenes, um, you know, makes the drinks, does all of these things, serves the tables, buses the tables. In no world would you try to do all of that yourself. It wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't. In fact, when I used to work in the restaurant business, 
I worked at a TGI Fridays and my fiance worked in uh, at a cheesecake factory. And there was a very interesting difference because for those of you who know anything about restaurants or whatever, Cheesecake Factory is a Fortune 500 company or some, it's, yeah, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But they are doing exceptionally well. And when we would sit down and chat about, oh, what was your shift like? You know, what did you do today? It was fascinating to me to see how at Fridays, things were not run as efficiently. As a server, you were responsible for bussing your tables, bringing silverware, greeting the table, bringing the drinks, taking the order, prep, bringing out the food, checking on the food, bringing sides, doing all of these things, bringing the check, which seems like a fairly normal amount of things to do as a server. However, at Cheesecake Factory, they had a very different setup where the servers were not responsible for about half of that. They really had three things they needed to focus on. They took the orders and rang them in, they brought drinks, and they brought bread and steak knives. They had people who were support staff as busboys who would help three or four servers in, a, in various sections, and they would be responsible for doing all of the cleaning and the busing and the packing to-go orders and bringing sides of things. So they were responsible for that. Then they had every single day of the week a food runner who would bring out all the food. This way they would have one person in the window where between the kitchen and the servers who would check on all the food for quality, whose job and only job was to make sure that things came out the right way. Now what's powerful about this is you think of it like an assembly line. If one person is focusing on 30 different things that need to go right versus five people focusing on a smaller amount, like what is possible in terms of productivity? Like how much more specialty can somebody become and how much more efficient can they become at that area of specialization, right? So I just always found that incredibly insightful and really fascinating in the way that the two companies structured their day to day. And the result was Cheesecake is far more profitable. Their, their place runs way more efficiently. The restaurant was like five or six times the size of the place that I worked. And the company was able to put out consistent quality food, which is why when people want to go to like an Applebee's or Friday's or Cheesecake, like people want to go to Cheesecake first. It's seen as a cut above. So thinking about that idea of you right now, maybe in your business, maybe you're the TGI Fridays, or maybe you're like the mom and pop shop where you're legit doing everything in your business. You are trying to juggle all the things. You know, I see this really become, you know, you call it like you become the bottleneck in your business. How many of you guys have experienced that, right? Where you either, I see, I see it show up in two primary ways in particular, either one, somebody gets really stuck behind the scenes in all the technical stuff. So before they are showing up and creating content and putting out video, they get really lost doing landing pages and setting up email stuff where, you know, I've had clients before who are like, oh, I bought Kajabi. I can't put my offer out until everything is totally perfectly dialed in. So we see it show up in that way. And of course, when somebody's a new entrepreneur, you know, can it be helpful for them to learn those things? Of course, absolutely. I'm a huge fan of that simply because I see too many people get screwed over by people who say they know what they're doing in regard to those things and actually have no idea. So it's very helpful to understand the basics and exactly be, and, and be able to communicate to someone else who you're bringing on or you're hiring as a you know independent contractor. It's helpful to be able to communicate exactly what you want things to look like and exactly what you need. That's important. But I see a lot of people doing all of that labor themselves even though it's not their area of expertise, and even though it is not a money-making activity for them in their business. Now, in a different business model, that, that could be a money-making activity, but for those of you who are coaches, who are building personal brands, if you are not having conversations, if you are not you know, putting things out there and asking for the sale, it probably is a secondary activity, but it might not be the direct money-making activity. The second way that I see this show up, so the first way is people getting stuck working behind the scenes. The second way is people getting stuck buried in one-on-one -on -one clients. Now this is a little bit tricky. This is a tricky place because what I see happening for many people is you know, they're posting online and they're celebrating like in Facebook groups and stuff. They're like, oh my God, I just hit my first 5K month. I hit a 10K month. I hit a 20K month. And they're excited about it, but what they're not sharing is that they've just 
massively overbooked themselves. And what I mean by this is, you know, many coaches begin, which I'm a huge fan of, of starting with one-on-one -on -one coaching. I love one-on-one -on -one coaching, especially for somebody who is just getting their feet wet as a coach. Why do I think it's so powerful? A couple of reasons. One, you don't need a large audience to start. You only need one, two, three, four, five, six people. You need a quality person versus quantity versus large number of people. You can test out your coaching methodology, your coaching system in real time with a real human being and get that immediate feedback and be able to make adjustments as you go versus having something pre-created inside you know, a course or training program inside modules and then people are going through it getting confused and you're like, oh my God, I have to change everything, right? So I really love that one-on-one -on -one coaching can allow us to kind of work out some of the kinks and deliver a high level experience for somebody. Because that's also gonna get you those testimonials, those first couple of testimonials, that social proof that your stuff works. And that's important for not only you and your belief in yourself and your brain, but it's also an essential piece of being able to effectively sell to the masses. And the, the third reason why I love one-on-one -on -one coaching so much is because you're getting that cash flow and usually a bigger chunk of cash right up front. You know, there are some people who come in with no audience and they don't really have the skill set or the tools and strategy to sell a $97 course and make $10,000. But if they just sold one one on one package for $10,000 or two at $5,000, boom, they would have 10 k And for many new coaches, being able to have that cash flow up front to one, not panic about finances and two, inject back into the business is really important. Like being able to have profit in a business, to be able to have that cash flow to, you know, go and invest in things like Kajabi when you do create a course or you want to build landing pages, lead pages, like all of these little things, you know, they do add up. So you want to have that cash flow. So I'm a huge fan, huge fan of getting started with one on one. The issue that I see for a lot of these individuals is that it doesn't take too long for them to realize that just doing one on one alone leads to some problems, right? If you look at the most successful coaches and entrepreneurs in the space, most of them are not only offering one on one. In fact, many of them are not offering one on one at all because it's just not the most effective use of time. It's not the most effective way to make that large scale impact. But one, starting with one on one is beautiful, like I said. So, what people tend to realize relatively quickly is that you know, when you are doing only one-on-one, -on -one, you fill your calendar. Like you fill your calendar fairly quickly. And so you may have come into this idea of like, I'm gonna build a business because I want time freedom, I wanna live my life, I wanna make an impact. And now all of a sudden, you're exhausted. You are working more hours and even, even when you aren't working, you're just, you're like, yeah, I just wanna sit and watch Netflix and have a glass of wine because I just had five client calls today and I am mentally tapped. And I know that I've got another five tomorrow and I need to be on my A game for these people. How many of you have ever been in that place? It's not a fun, it's not a fun place to be. It's really, really not. And the other side to this is not only are they feeling that burnout, and they have no more energy to give. They're just tired. They feel like they've created this prison for themselves and now they have to meet these expectations of all these other people who have needs and they're sending messages and they want feedback on things and they're just like, ah, I don't, I, I need a break. I need business hours. I need boundaries. And maybe they haven't gotten that in place either. But unfortunately, when somebody's that tired and they're that burnt out and they've been working for hours, what I've heard from many of these individuals who are experiencing this in real time, like right now, is that they're like, I like I have no time for marketing. I have no energy to get on live video. And I'm I'm put it, I'm trying, I'm doing it, but people can, you know, people can read your energy. People know when you're tired. People know when you're not there. And actually one of my clients, absolutely love and adore her, she had shared on a coaching call a couple of months ago, she was like, you know, during a really uh, you know, challenging time in her life and business she was showing up on video, but people 
we're only and so she got through that period of her life and then more recently people were reaching out to her and saying oh I, I can work with you you have space and she was like yeah I have space she started making more clear offers and they said this woman in particular said oh what you just seemed unavailable so previously because of the energy in which she was showing up with and the way she was presenting things on social she seemed busy and so this particular person who wanted to hire her didn't hire her because she didn't think she was going to get the customer experience that she was looking for really important right so even going back to what we were saying in the beginning this whole idea of like wearing the badge of honor for being busy i personally don't want to hire somebody who's so busy that they are going to take you know 72 or more hours to respond to me if i'm working with them in an intimate way at a really high level there's a high investment so these people, they are burnt out because they're doing too many one-on-ones or they're burnt out because they're living behind the scenes doing all the tech stuff themselves. They feel like they have no energy to show up and actually do the things that are driving client attraction, do the things that are actually getting their name out there, being on podcasts, doing live videos, doing a webinar, do, going into a launch, writing a book, speaking on stage, all of these things that so many entrepreneurs say, that's my vision, that's where I wanna be in the next five years two years, 10 years, whatever it may be. And my question to those people is like, okay, well, based on the business that you have now, if nothing changes, will you be able to do that? Will you be able to achieve those things? Or will it be incredibly challenging next to impossible? And I think that's a big wake up call for a lot of people because on the outside, they finally feel like they're getting traction. They're like, I'm making some money in my business. It's working. I don't want to break it. It's working, Jen. Don't, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. I've got my one-on-one -on -one clients. I'm very burnt out, but like, I'm finally making money. This is working. I don't want to change anything. And I understand that. I've been there. I get that. However, the burnout is not just a temporary thing if you're experiencing it. It's compounding. If you're exhausted, you're exhausted right now, where do you think you're going to be in three months, in six months, in a year? And this applies whether you're an online coach or this really works. This is an important conversation if you guys are in network marketing as well, or you have a network marketing stream of income where maybe you haven't really created boundaries with your team and with your customers. And so you just feel like you have to be on 24 seven. You don't get a break. There's no real business hours. There's no, uh, clarity around what the expectation is and so you feel like you just have to keep giving and pouring and eventually you'll make the money back but i have to tell you it doesn't always work that way in fact more often than not it doesn't especially if you're not being strategic about it if you're just showing up and pouring into people and giving and giving and giving without any boundaries you are gonna run into a problem like you just straight up are and i usually don't like to say things like that and project that onto people like maybe you wouldn't but i can you know just just look at the data just look at the behavior compounding over time look at the way you feel now if that compounds over 30 days 60 days 90 days where will you be right some of this stuff is not just like the way that you might feel it might look like no just look at the trend look at the information that you already have there in front of you because ultimately if your vision is to be a person that is like writing a book and speaking. I had a conversation with a client recently and she was really showing up very powerfully, very present, very intimately in her courses and programs. And I kind of asked her like, you know, do you want to start evergreening some of this stuff or transitioning this so that you're not launching all the time, so that you're not creating something new all the time, so that, you know, you're, you're not having to work 24 seven. And there was a lot of fear in that conversation a lot of fear around letting go of being that person for everybody else. And I talked to another client recently who was like afraid to up her prices. She was like, but if I up my prices, like what if I lose clients? And I was like, well, let's play with this idea, right? If you 2X your prices and you lose half your clients, why is that making you feel panicky? And she was like, I don't know, that makes me freaked out. I'm like, well, let's do the math. If you 2X your prices and you like divide your clients in half, you will literally be making the same amount that you're making right now, but you'll be working half the time. So wouldn't that be awesome? Because she was totally undercharging, totally undercharging for what she was providing, right? And then that other client who was like, I just have to be active in my courses and programs all the time. Like I get it, people are rewarding that. They're telling you, you're the best coach ever because you're so present and nobody else does this many live videos and nobody else answers my questions this fast. 
And I was thankfully able to help her recognize that because I did that. I freaking did that in the early days. And I got excited that I could be that person for everybody else. I was the fixer. I was the hard worker and I was the fixer and I wore those identities very proudly. But the problem was, one, with my clients being the fixer, I was not creating any time, energy, and space for my own personal expansion. So how can I continue to lead if I'm not personally expanding and growing? If I'm just stuck in the trenches answering their questions? The second thing was, I was answering their questions that they could easily have figured out, right? They weren't asking them in an empowered way and I was trying to be the fixer, solve all the problems. And so in doing that and showing up and being that advice giver versus the coach, I was robbing them of incredibly valuable breakthroughs to the point where at the end of programs, I mean, there's no real way to measure this, right? But like, I can probably bet you that the, the clients that I have now, when they end working with me, they are far more confident than my earliest clients because I coach them in a very strategic specific way so that they do feel like they have ownership and responsibility and the skill set in themselves to be able to grow their business, to be able to answer those difficult questions, to be able to problem solve on the fly instead of being like, oh, Jen's going to answer it for me. Jen's going to know all the answers. And I very proudly say now, like, I got all the answers. I don't know all the answers. Hell no. And I don't want to be that person. Damn, there was so much pressure when I thought I had to be the person who knew all the things and had all the answers. No, bye. Like, no, not, I'm not interested in that. I know that I have a high level of skill and knowledge in my lane, in my area that I've studied in depth, that I've coached around in depth. And for sure, there are times when people ask me questions that I could easily answer. But I know I'm not serving them at the highest level if I just do that. So even just being able to do that and shift the way that I coach, that's allowed me personally to change, even though I'm working intimately with people still to some degree, I was able to let go of some of the emotional and energetic drain because I no longer needed to be the be all end all. And I think really, you know, the, the one thing that I want you to, to take away from this conversation today is that you can be in a place in your business where you're the be all end all doing all the things, all the tech, all the social media creation, all the podcast editing, got your hands in everything. You could be the person that wants to take on a million one-on-one -on -one clients and solve everybody's problems and save everybody. But at the end of the day, what is your ultimate vision? Like we've got to get out of the, the thinking about right now. Like yes, in this moment, you might be in a place where you're just trying to keep up with your business. Maybe you're in a place where you're feeling really reactive instead of proactive. And when I say reactive, I mean, oh my God, we got to do this. Ah, I forgot to post today. Oh shoot, we have, we're late on a podcast. Like, are you in that place in your business? Or do you have a plan? Do you have a structure? Do you have a clear intention? Because I even find in myself when I'm not in the midst of a launch, things can get a little wonky, right? But as soon as I know, oh, we launch on this date, we have these deadlines, like for my brain, for me, Jen Casey, like, that is so incredibly powerful. So my team knows and I know that I need to have those things in place because that gets me excited to wake up every single day because I can clearly see and measure the impact that I'm gonna make based on like, okay, these are the things we're gonna get done, this is gonna be amazing, and that allows me to really see the big vision and hold on to the vision, even on the days where I don't like, I'm just in a bad mood or whatever, like we all have days, right? So being able to know my deadlines and my vision and what we're creating is so incredibly powerful. So again, just kind of going back to quickly recap, if you're in a place right now where you're working those eight hour weeks and you feel like your quote unquote business has really just become a job and you are the worst, birth, the, the worst boss of all time who doesn't give you any time off, doesn't have any boundaries, wants you, like that's just really what it is. Like if you guys were working for somebody right now who expected that you worked 80 hours a week, who wanted you to work through family time, wake up at you know seven o'clock in the morning, work until 9.30 at night, stay up sometimes, pull all nighters. Like you would be out of that job in a heartbeat. Like you just wouldn't. You just wouldn't be available for that. And a lot of you guys are doing that to your, you're doing that to yourself. And unfortunately, the people who are doing it to themselves are seeing it as a positive. They're seeing it as that badge of honor of like, look how hard I can work. And I just wanna encourage you to recognize that there is another way. 
It doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to be stuck behind the scenes. You don't have to be stuck doing one-on-one -on -one coaching all the time just to make money online, right? So, and I remember too, uh, just a quick little funny thing. I remember early on in my business hearing a Will Smith quote and he was like, you could put me on, uh, you could put me on a treadmill next to anybody and I'm either gonna outrun them or I'm gonna die trying. And at the time, I interpreted that as like, yes, I will run harder and faster than anyone else or I'll die, like yes. And I interpreted that as like hard work. But the way that I see that now, and I don't totally agree with that anymore, the way that I see it now is like, I'm gonna stay on that treadmill, not because I need to go the fastest, I'm gonna go as fast as I personally can and run it in a way where I can consistently be on that treadmill. And the whole idea of like, I will not get off is like, I don't care if other people are still on. It makes literally no difference to me. I don't need to beat somebody else. I don't need to win. I'm just doing it for me. Like I'm just on my own treadmill with my own like blinders up and I'm inviting some other people to run on the treadmill with me so we can get some more mileage going. Like I don't need to be solo person competing against somebody next to me. Like community and collaboration over competition all day long. So I, I'm like, let's do this together. Let's do this and, and raise each other up. So I have a totally, and I used to share that stuff, like un, unknowing my bias and my belief that was actually driving those thoughts and those like anecdotes. But I just wanna share that because now I just see things so freaking differently. But if you're in a place right now where you're just feeling burnt out in your business, you want to figure out like, what the heck do I do to scale it? Maybe you've been in the online space for, you know, a couple of years. Maybe you just got started and you're, you're beginning to get your feet wet as a coach and you're seeing kind of what other people are doing, but you're not sure if it's right for you. Um, I'm actually going to be running a three part free video series, video training. And I'm gonna really be breaking down exactly how to build, sell, and effectively run profitable group coaching programs. And the reason for this is all of those people who are stuck behind the scenes, or all of those people who are doing all this one-on-one -on -one coaching, I truly believe, and I'm gonna show you why creating a group coaching program is actually gonna really help you reach more people, still serve at that deep, intimate level, and scale your business, scale your profits. Because here's the thing, when you do a group coaching program, <laughs> I love you, Ashley. When you do a group coaching program, or even if, so what I have in my business, my, uh, I have kind of more of like a program slash course where there's a ton of support and guidance. It's not like a DIY type of thing. And then I also have like a much higher level group coaching experience where, you know, you're jumping on calls with me, getting, you know, laser coaching in your business. Um, and I, I think what's so powerful about being able to do that is like when you're only doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, as much as I love it, I know for myself, like in the beginning when I was only doing one-on-one, -on -one, I was repeating myself over and over and over again to different people saying the same thing. Or I would be like, oh, I, w I wish this person can get to know this person because like she's a nutritionist or she's a dietitian and this chick over here, my other client, she's, you know, a fitness coach and like they could totally be affiliates. They, they were both sitting there going, ah, oh, I'm a nutritionist. I think I need to create a fitness plan because they, my, my clients want to work out. And I was like, no, 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 like you guys need to work together. So what's so powerful when people are in a group is they have that community, they have that support, they have that collaboration. They can be on each other's podcasts. They can affiliate for each other's programs because they're not all in the same niche, right? Or if, if you're not a business coach, right? Just even think about fitness programs. Like when you're doing something with someone else, they're holding you accountable. You know, even when I used to be a health coach and I was in network marketing, those groups were amazing. The community in those groups, it ran itself because those women showed up every single day for each other. It wasn't just for themselves anymore. It was because they didn't want to let each other down because they knew by them posting, they were inspiring somebody else in that group to show up and do the work too. Because they know, they knew that there were days when they didn't feel like doing it and they would pop in that Facebook group and they would see that Ashley or Jody or whoever had, had shown up that morning even though they didn't want to. So they felt inspired to do it too. So when you've got that group, that community, not only do you have, like I said, that connection, that community, that collaboration, the ability to have that accountability and support, they are more taken care of because they now have their wolf pack, right? And like 
when you've got somebody who like for all of you guys you're all amazing people so you're attracting more amazing people and you're helping to then facilitate all of those connections i talk to so many women who are my programs just like ashley who will say to me like oh i found my my biz bestie my best friend through doing your program or course or mastermind or whatever and i just i think that's so cool like that makes me so happy to be able to be somebody who like holds the space for that who facilitates and is able to connect amazing people who would not have otherwise met each other who now can be you know with each other and as they everybody's continuing to grow it's like they're gonna have these massive like seven and multiple seven figure businesses and running events and having each other speak on each other's stage like like i'm like it's just giddy like it makes me excited because i just i see the big vision for so many of these women who get to work together so as much as i love one-on-one -on -one, i totally prefer personally being able to have that space and then like i said before when you're just doing only one-on-one -on -one, you're repeating things over and over and over again things that either can be put into some kind of recording that can be watched and then discussed and you can go deeper on the on the one-on-one uh, -on -one calls or it's something that you can have a collective conversation about on a group coaching call or on a mastermind call where some of those people might be at a higher level and they'll be able to really coach and connect and add even more to that collaborative uh, conversation. So I just wanted to share this conversation with you guys today to really hopefully get you thinking a little bit more outside the box of what is possible for your business. And if you're in a place right now where you're doing the one-on-one -on -one or you're doing network marketing and you're just like, you just don't know how to get out of it. You just don't know how to make that transition without cutting your revenue. Because I know that's a big fear. You don't want to lose clients. You don't want to fire clients. You're like, how do I make that transition into a more profitable business? And I just want to encourage you and say, there's no better time than now. Chances are your clients are going to be really excited that you're creating a new opportunity for them to work with you in a different way, work at a different level and have all these other people to be able to hold that container for them and with them to add in that additional support, guidance, accountability. Like I know inside my programs, there's times where someone asks a question and they will get the best idea and feedback from somebody else who's part of that community. Somebody who might actually be their ideal client and will eventually want to go and work with them. Like there's just so much possibility. There's so much expansiveness as you continue to expand and hold that larger container for people. Now I know there's so many different things. The idea of a group program, ah, like where do I start? How do I structure it? Where do I host it? How do I build it? How do I run a group call versus one-on-one? -on -one? All of these things are questions that I am gonna be answering and addressing in depth in my three-part training series, Profitable Programs, all about how to build, sell, and effectively run high-level group coaching programs. So if you are feeling called to do this, like I just wanna invite you, it's totally free. We start tomorrow. You can go to heyjincasey.com slash training. We start on October 3rd. So if you're listening to this after the fact, that's totally cool. You will be able to watch the replays for a little bit after. So it's going to be October 3rd, which is a Thursday, October 8th, which is Tuesday, and the following Thursday, which is October 10th. So we're going to be doing our free three trainings on those days. That way you'll have plenty of time to watch a replay if you missed it live or go back and watch it again. Watching it again is really powerful. That is what the most successful entrepreneurs do because they know that they don't 100% learn something and fully integrate it just in the first time that they hear something. So just want to encourage you to consider that. If you have a biz bestie already, then you need to invite them to come and join this training with you. HeyJenCasey.com slash training. I'll link that up for you guys. And if you're in a place where you don't have a biz bestie yet, well, guess what? There's so many incredible coaches and service-based entrepreneurs and course creators who are already inside this community. We've got over 500 people signed up, even more, another couple hundred I think signed up today. So you're gonna have a ton of people to connect with and network with and learn from. So you wanna go to heyjuncasey.com slash training, grab your seat, grab your spot right now. And I cannot wait to see you on October 3rd. Awesome guys, thank you for being here and I'll talk to you soon.